you had a guest, yeah, you had a guest yes, from, I had from a, the US. Yes, I had a, when I was... You've been very inspired by the Americans at that time. It's just a book, uh, but knowledge, it's, it's only the, the power when you're applying it. When you've been 23, you came here with 2,000 and half yeah, with two thousand and five hundred dollars, and help him with the first steps in America because he doesn't know the language, he doesn't know where he's going, and he doesn't know what he's gonna do. Now you have five main companies and more than four hundred workers. He was um, Lithuanian, so I don't know if it's um, success or it's a coincidence. That's how I found first job. The first job, it was in construction. Hello, Thomas. Hi. So, pleasure to meet you again. Me too. Thank you very much. A couple of years ago when I met you the first time and that was the first interview that time you mentioned about very interesting three books in the business area, from the business area. And I was really excited and my followers as well. And when we came here, you mentioned about the next very interesting book, which is The, the Dream Manager, yes? By Matt Kelly, yes? Yes. Would you please tell us about this book? So this idea born um, when I read the book and see how to find a way to uh, motivate people and um, make them kind of stay in the company and and help them to accomplish in life something something what they dream about something what they inspired about because their dreams it's not your dream so um, and and then I start noticing you know and start seeing what people want what they want to accomplish in their lives and how to motivate them to be around you and why you want why not somebody else why the people have to work in the company why not somewhere else how to make them your friends versus versus push them come to work every day and, and for just simple paycheck they need more than the paycheck they need they need sort of dream sort of uh, inspiration so they can come to work and work same time can enjoy and be part of the company's growth and and they they could be recognized with some something big bigger so um, that's what kind of inspiration I got from this this book and, uh, and hopefully I can um, utilize it as much as I can can I say that you strongly recommend this book to read? I mean, the books, it's, you know, it's for every person um, have a di different inspiration. Yes, but the dream manager, the name of this book, so excited. Yeah, it's uh, same time I'd excited, like to read it right same time now. it's, it's, um, um, it's just a book. Uh, but knowledge, it's it's only the, the power when you're applying it. Okay. So, when you was 14, that was in Latvia, at your home, you had a guest, yeah? You had a guest? Yes, from, I had From a, the US? Yes, I had a... When you I was... been a, very inspired by the Americans at that time. Yes. Can I say that's the reason why you moved to the US? when you were 23 yeah so people usually change from 
inspiration or desperation. Of course. So um, this time when I was a kid, and I ki- like like all kids, they they looking for some kind of ways, some kind of ideas how to what they're gonna be when they're gonna grow up. They always looking for source of inspiration and source of wisdom to tap into. So how was you inspired the time? You know I- I- inspiration more came from 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 curiosity. But why and ev- the the everybody was talking about America as a country of opportunities and the, the curiosity was to just just to know it's surreal or no or no. But the very famous British proverb says curiosity killed the cat but not at your case, yes? Okay. So your dream came true when you've been twenty three you came here with two thousand and half uh, with two thousand and five hundred dollars. That was how many years ago? It's in two thousand. It, it was in two thousand. It was two twenty two years ago. Yes. And now you have five main companies and more than four hundred workers here in Chicago. From your first time when you visited the US. You came here to Chicago, Illinois. Why here? Many people try to choose New York, Los Angeles, and some big mega palaces. But you choose exactly this city, Chicago. The city which is very famous in the world, like a gangster city, because of the Al Capone. So why here? Um, first thing why I'm here, it's just because um, it's the biggest Lithuanian population. Oh. Uh, it's number one in Northern America. Um, number two, um, the same lady uh, who is the second generation cousin of my father, when she was visiting when I was at age 14, she lived here. And what, what we... Um, we kind of was really shy to to ask to call her and ask to say can Tom come to you know could you could you please you know meet him in O'Hare airport my sister uh, said Tom let's let's send a letter UPS letter which is at that time cost hundred dollars to send it or a big a lot okay. of money to pay and we just send the letter asking could you please the, my father was writing could you please take my son for the just and help him with the first steps in America because he doesn't know the language he doesn't know where he's going and he doesn't know what he's gonna do so just could you please and um, 24 hours later when she get that letter she call us back and says yeah so it was the probably one of the happiest moments of my life because somebody said yes and and I kind of was like excited to wow I know somebody gonna meet me in O'Hare airport and gonna take me somewhere where I gonna live and uh, and I I have no clue what I'm gonna do mm-hmm. okay so the British press called the first you know women's prime minister of the UK Margaret Thatcher like Thatcher Thatcher milk snatcher you know why because um, you know for sponsoring legislation to eliminate the free milk program for students over the age of seven. She started her reforming, her reforms in 
the UK from this. How you started your business? Now you have five companies and you have four directions. First of all, how you started your business and what kind of directions on the business do you have? So, um, to, to, to start something, you, you have to begin from somewhere. So, um, so when I came to this country, first, um, the, my cab driver who took me from O'Hare Airport to, to Willowbrook, Illinois, where I lived next three months, was the, um, he was um, Lithuanian. So I didn't know if it's um, success or it's a coincidence. That's how I found the first job. So the first job, it was in construction. And then, um, and then I become cab driver. Then I become truck driver. How long? Um, I was cab driver one and a half years. I, had, I was driver two years. I had huge accident, roll over the truck. It was like a probably biggest wake up call. What about the exam for your license for the track? Yeah, I. Um, I think you I failed. failed. I three failed. Times. I, I failed three times, and uh, and I had to wait a month, and then and then finally I uh, I passed. So it was like a you know. So. Not. I would not say it hard, but I was so stressed out when I was like passing the test. I'm like hit the line a couple of times and then fail. Just... And then you had a decision that you like to work at this direction, tracking business. Yes. So now, what kind of directions do you have on your business? So tracking, logistic, as I understand, and. So all the all the areas where you can serve the people. So so trucking you deliver the goods, um, logistics where you coordinate the loads and you pass to other carriers. Um, then shop and maintenance and um, truck sales. It's it's all of them basically connected. It's all of them us servicing this country to, to, to deliver the goods. Having 400 workers and five companies, of course you had many problems and issues. Would you please tell us three main problems which you had before? Um, I would call it problems with opportunities. Opportunities to, to uh, to enjoy solving them and um, and and be ready because every day life gonna throw you new and new opportunities and just the one thing it it's it just I like it so I like the it the first main problem which you had in your business is the most serious one with which you can share with us? The, I think problem is not the problem. I think the reaction is the problem. Oh. Uh, so, um, you know, you know, I didn't, or we in the company didn't had like, a, I mean, we had the fatality when when the person got killed, I think it's a in the in the trucking industry. It's a, yeah. it's a huge problem. It's uh, one one involved that the human dying in a, in an accident. I think in logistics, generally, it's a, the probably biggest issue. That's why the you know. Can I say that's the first problem? Okay, number two. Number two reactions by your number, words. Number two reaction it's it's I think it's a, to choosing right people. Oh. 
and uh, HR management and don't and don't be discouraged because your vision it's not not the person vision not the you know not everybody can believe in you and I think that the, the I think second big thing it's the trust would you prefer the loyal person or the professional person who has a very who are very well experienced or oh, loyal person why because everything else you can train no. it just takes the time I think but time attitude, is money I think attitude determines your altitude but time is money in New York we have very famous phrase no man no fan in Chicago as well uh, that's why it took so many years to, to build the company okay the third issue Question. Maybe you couldn't have enough time for your family. That's uh, that's uh, that's a constant battle with the myself, and the, you know you cannot be in two places same time. And um, to find that balance, it's a pretty tough task to accomplish but I'm constantly working with myself and um, mm -hmm. and will be never it'll, it'll be always the progress and always I'll try to make it better I like your phrase concerning the problems so there is no problems, there are some reactions, yeah? That's a very good phrase, thank you very much. So the next question. I know very well that you are a very successful person, even though you are a very modest person. And of course, you have to have many enemies, not just friends. And I know you try to avoid having the enemies, because it's a very dangerous game, having the enemies on the left, right and the center. But I also had the Soviet, um, you know, recommendation because I grew up there. You shouldn't have enemies. You have to be every time uh, very friendly. You have to have friends, not the enemies. But just a couple of months ago, I've changed my attitude concerning this issue because I inspired by the words of the very famous British poet. Charles Mackay, I read his poems about the enemies. I'll try to read it. You don't have enemies, you see. Alas, my friend, the both is poor. He who has mingled in the fray on duty, that's the brave indoor. You must have made fools. If you have none, small of the work that you have done. You've hit no traitor on the hip. You've dashed no cup from perjured lip. You've never turned the wrong to right. You've been a covert in the fight. Thomas, what do you think? Having the enemies, is that a good or bad for you? So I think it's, you know, would be a uh, very, um, I couldn't find the word to describe um, live in the illusion that somebody don't all of them yeah. all people loves you and, and you know you are not a hundred dollars yeah a hundred dollars you know, everyone a, loves this yeah. yeah you're right you're not a dollar you're not gonna be good for everyone yeah so it's uh, it's correct so Maybe I have a lot of them, maybe not. It depends how, how many of them so wearing the mask. the you know. enemies, it's one of the parts to be a successful person. Do you agree? I agree. Of course. And, uh, you know, 
Um, I think, you know, I'm not um, spending so much time thinking about them. I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm focused on something, you know, I'm kind of not to paying attention to the noise, just trying to uh, do what I think it's, it's right. But they can create some problems for you if you don't think about them. That's right. So um, I would be naive to, to think you don't have them, and it would be, you know, you always have to be ready for. Uh, so it and means you to have strike. to think about them. It's uh, actually it's really good. Uh, uh, question where where I should more ponder and uh, and 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 think and be ready. Okay. So the last question concerning your business: What kind of plans do you have for the future? You know, nothing fails like success. Mm-hmm. So when you're successful, is that your life motto? Is that your life motto? Life. Life motto. Motto. What does it mean? Divis. Living in the divis. Uh, sort of. It's um. It's. It, you know, if you think you're expert, that's where you are. You know, start losing the focus. You'll be failed. And when you fail, so I think you have to continue to be better, continue to keep improving, and uh, continue moving forward, even if you fail. Walaikum <laughs> salam. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Our friend. So you know. good when you when you are famous. If you <laughs> when you are famous, everybody knows you. Yeah, <laughs> because of the representative of our Uzbek community. <laughs> yeah. So um, just continue to to um, to your business to the your, your direction. Yeah. Just can just continue to 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 innovate. Try to be better. Learn from mistakes and try to be an expert of this area. Try to be the expert, yeah. Try to, you know, surround yourself with the, with the smarter people. And your way to the top. Okay. So, that was all the questions about your business. And now I have a couple of questions from the very famous questionnaire by Marcel Proust. Uh, I need a very short and quick answers. Okay. Ooh. Okay. What is your idea of perfect happiness? Idea of perfect happiness? I think happiness is uh, a sort of flow in your life where we always have to be in the moment to doing something what's what matters, what's um, to um, oh, it's a very tough question. <laughs> That's Marcel first. Uh, it wasn't his question, uh, but he gave very outstanding answers. That's why that questionnaire has his name. So, your answer? What means happiness? Yes. What is your idea of perfect happiness? Very tough one. So, 
family, sex and business, friends? Uh, I think to leave the legacy. Okay. The next question. Which living person do you most admire? My mother. Great. I had the same answer. What or who is the greatest love of your life? Probably the mother too. When and where were you happiest? Happiest? Yes. Probably when I'm uh, when I'm in um, action. Okay. Which talent would you most like to have? You missed your dancing class because of this interview. Maybe dancing? Uh, I would like to... Uh, I think talents, it's a... Uh, but which talent would you most like to have? Which talent? Said that I have to answer really quickly, so it's uh... <laughs> oh gosh, it's not quick answer, not a quick answer. Yeah, it's uh, so dancing, singing, So many options. We need just one, Thomas. Probably to um, had a be more book smart. Mm -hmm. Go to school because that's for me it's the toughest, toughest thing since I never, you know, go any college any. Oh. Any uh, any school and for you me are it's a practical. Person. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. more like a street smart, mm. and I would like to have that um, the book smart person experience. Okay, that's also a talent. Thank you. So, what do you consider your greatest achievement? To create family. What do you must value in your friends? Because we mentioned about the enemies, now I'd like to ask about the friends. Trust. Who are your favorite writers? Street writers. You know, um, I'm not a, such a big uh, book reader, but but you have your favorite writers. As many books I read, probably uh, favorite writer uh, probably Robin Sharma. Okay, the first, the first one. Matthew Kelly. Matthew Kelly, as we mentioned before. Yeah, and um, I really like Ryan Holiday. Okay, thank you. 
What is your greatest regret? Talk too much. Mm. On what occasion do you lie? Good question. It's a white lie and black lie. Um, white lie? Probably. Not to. Uh, what do you mean by white lie? It's it's when you when you if you say the truth, it will be painful for every person because people really sensitive. Thank you. Uh, we mentioned before Margaret Thatcher, the Prime Minister of the UK, and just with her book, the last book, which is the uh, strategy for the changing world. And the last words of this book was very interesting. With that words, I'd like to finish up our interview. Margaret Thatcher said, the worst moment in our life when we have too much free time and we don't have any idea for what and for whom we can use it. Dear Thomas, I'd like to, to you, every time be busy, you shouldn't have any free time, even though when you have it, be with your family, and every time be so open mind as I know you. Thank you very much for the interview. Thank you so much, Adabek. That was my great pleasure. And hopefully, see you again. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.